Hello, everyone, awesome. and welcome back All right. to Idiot Saddle Hunter. I am really happy to be with the New York Saddle Hunters, Scott and Joe, today. Scott and Joe, thank you for joining me. Ah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's an honor. So, I mean, a lot of Saddle Hunters um, know about you guys and have seen your videos. Will you just start, just kind of tell us a little bit about yourselves and uh, who you are? Okay. Um, oh, I'm um, Scott Kurtenbach. Uh, I've been uh, in the arborist in 35 years. And, uh, you know, so climbing with ropes is uh, definitely uh, no stranger to me. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a hunter for the last 40 years or so, 45 years. Um, and, you know, Joe and I, we've been friends for, for at least that long. And, uh, you know, we kind of always, Joe, Joe brought it up to me years ago and stuff. He said, man, have you ever thought about, you know, using your ropes, using your saddle and, you know, for hunting. And I was like, ah, you know, I guess it didn't really, it didn't really click just then because, uh, I, I guess, you know, cutting with saw, with bringing saws up in a tree, cutting gas and oil, the whole thing. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, the smell of it and this and that. Nah, you know, you wouldn't use that in a hunting situation. And then all of a sudden, you know, this whole saddle thing kind of, you know, sprung up again and, and sparked an interest and, you know, and with Joe, Joe's input to it and stuff. And it's kind of like where we, where we are today. Yeah. You know? I, I, I used to say, you know, once the, Back way back in the '80s, there was the Anderson tree sling, and we had some friends that, that used those. But we really never got into using them. We just hunted like everybody else, using tree stands and everything. And uh, in the last couple of years, we got more into hunting public land, and we were climbing a thousand feet of elevation, hiking back mile, mile and a half, and we would we were able to set fixed position stands out there. But we'd have to worry about stands being stolen, that sort of thing. Right. So then we, we started to look back into saddle hunting and it just made sense for us. So we got into saddle hunting and just like everybody else, we started out with sticks. And that's when I said to Scott, I said, why don't we use your ropes? Let's do that. And, uh, you know, he showed me how to do it. I struggled a little bit at first, but then it just, within a day or two, it, you know, got really easy. And I was like, you know, this is something that if, you know, we love it, a lot of other guys are going right. to love it too. So right. we made a video. And it seems like quite a, quite a few people seem to, uh, they, they see what we see. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 And for something, uh, I, I guess, you know, we kind of did it more as, I don't know, I guess it was just something, something different. It was a fun thing to do. And, and we had no idea that it would have taken off the way it did, you know, and, and the same thing. We just said, ah, you know, we're going to pitch this idea out there to the community and, and see how, how it takes hold. And, Boy, did it ever, yeah. you know, it's really turned into a, a whole new way of, of uh, hunting. Yeah. More, you know, it's, it's, it's added another dimension of fun to, to hunting for us because honestly, like for deer hunting, you're, you're climbing up into a tree and that's just something you have to do to deer hunt. But now in the pre and post season, we do so much scouting now and we do a lot of scout climbing to get up in the tree and set it up. And it's just, it's literally added another dimension of fun to the sport. And, you know, it's, it's really half the fun for us. Right. I think that's an excellent point is that it just, you know, the hunt is amazing, but it's all the preparation, all the thought that goes into it and having to be able to play with your saddle setup and pay, play with your climbing setup and, oh, I wonder what I should use here and use there. It does add a whole other level of enjoyment and fun to the experience. I think that's great. Yeah, well, you, yeah. you, you notice too, just following the forums, all of us saddle hunters, we're all gearheads and we're, everybody's looking for the, the latest, greatest trick or idea that's going to give you a little bit of an edge. So we're always tinkering and trying different things. And um, it's just, it's part of the whole thing. It's part of the whole fun, the anticipation, um, and then all the gear and all the, all the practice and trying to refine your own specific way of doing things. And when you go out there, you know, now you, you just can't wait to get out there and hunt. And, you know, right. if, if it can, if it all comes together and you get a nice kill, then it's like, that's, yeah. that's Ice the ultimate. cake. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. uh, and, and, and not to mention the safety aspect as well too. Yes. You know, the, yeah. the safety aspect is just huge, you know, and a lot of guys that we introduced this to, um, 
you know, that's the first thing they're like, wow, I've never felt so safe, yeah. you know, going up a tree. I mean, once they learn that to get that, that technique down, yeah. they're like, you know, and then Joe would always pitch it that way too. He's like, you know, if, if, if you were to climb a tree, you know, who would you ask? You know, you'd ask an arborist, right? An arborist, they're just one of the safest uh, guys out there, but, you know, they practice safety every day and they're, you know, in order to go to work every day, you got to be safe. You know, that's, that's number one. So mm -hmm. So it really yeah, went hand in hand with. Uh, yeah, I, I viewed it as, you know what, mo most of us tre uh, tree stand hunters or whatever, we're climbing like amateurs, right? You know, and it just kind of makes sense. If you're climbing trees, the guys who do it day in and day out, um, they need, to, you know, they have to meet OSHA standards. They have to do it safely. It's got to be efficient. Mm -hmm. And it just makes sense. Like, you know, shouldn't we be looking at what, what are the pros doing? And once you learn how to climb like a pro, it's like, it, it just, it opens up so many more trees. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things is what tree stands, you would look, you know, we would take our climbers and you got to look for a tree right. that's got no that's limbs, certain, type, certain yeah. type. And that, you know, that's the tree you're looking for and hoping it's in the right spot. But now I can get into virtually any tree, especially if we get involved with doing single stick climbing as well. Um, but with a rope, I can get into a huge tree, you know? So it, now we you, you can just look into a spot and look out and it, right. it's, you can get into virtually any tree now. So that, that's one of the, the good aspects of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. How do you think that being able to climb more efficiently, having a saddle, how has that changed your hunting style from, you know, hunting 40 years and being in the outdoors a lot? Um, how has it changed from 15, 20 years ago to now? Oh, uh, I'd say immensely. Um, you know, I've noticed it myself. And it's funny when I hear other guys who are using this now um, as well, too. It's just, uh, you know, now walking into a woods, it, it's funny, you know, we're like, wow, you know, I walk into a woods now and I see so many possibilities, like endless possibilities that as, um, you know, a guy with a sticks and a stand or a climber, you know, you're kind of closed off to certain varieties of trees, you know, and uh, it, it's just, yeah, it's really opened the door up to, um, you know, huge potential. And like I said, just endless opportunity. Tree is big enough to hold you. Um, there's almost no tree that's too big or too small that you can climb. So with, with a saddle, and that's the beauty of it. The saddle you can you can climb using a bunch of different methods to climb. You, you don't have to be married to any one, mm -hmm. but using the saddle just there's almost no tree you can't get into. Right, right. And then the other is the uh, the fact that you can hunt 360 degrees out of a saddle now. Yeah. That that's the nice thing. So you're not just pigeonholing yourself into saying, okay, I can cover these two lanes and. You know, if anything goes behind me, usually with a tree stand, you know, you're kind of a little bit you're, limited. You're limited there. So, you know, that's I mean, that in itself, whether well, like Joe was saying, whether you climb with any methods, you know, stick, rope, um, you know, just the saddle itself is just uh yeah, it's just it's it's given us that much more opportunity as a hunter. Yeah, definitely more versatile, a lot lighter. And you know, I think a lot of people who haven't gotten into saddle hunting, the one of the biggest questions you get is can you sit all day in it? Can you be comfortable and sit all day? And absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've you now it, you know, it depends on your body and the saddle that you purchase, but, um, you know, last year we hunted one day in particular, we, we set up in a tree, I was filming and we got into the tree and it was about an hour before sun up. We sit, stayed all day, 40 mile an hour winds, about 18 degrees for a high. We sat all day. And I said, I turned to Scott and said, I'm so comfortable right now that if I, I really wanted to, I could sleep in this tree tonight and be, <laughs> be ready to hunt yeah, in the morning. Absolutely. I was that comfortable. So it, you can be that comfortable right. if you yeah. find the right setup for you. No doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. I think that's, that's great. I know before I started saddle hunting, it would, I typically look for spots that were like the easiest to get to or the easiest to set up on and hope the deer were there. We're now being able right. to go in and scout, okay, this is where the trails are. This is where the scrape is. There's some rubs over here. The wind's coming from this direction the majority of the time. Okay, 
where what shooting has the best shooting lane okay that's the tree now i'm going to set up in rather than being oh well hopefully something happens and he ends up walking 75 yards out of his normal right. routine to get to me um yeah, yeah. and that makes a, a big difference um you know yeah, you no, know it's one of the one of the nice things about saddle hunting that scott and i you know really started to utilize is thinking about your spots you know like you just said sometimes you're looking for these spots where you know you can get into easily but if you can get into it easily anybody else can get into it easily too so like i like to think of it like if I, if somebody was trying to kill me where would i live on this mountain and it's usually the most inaccessible spot and if it's inaccessible to the hunter it's going to be more difficult for you to get in there with a tree stand so a saddle makes it where there's you're just wearing it in you're taking a rope and you just you know, you can get up there. It might still be but it's less gear to bring in. You know, we can, we go in, we have maybe 10 pounds of gear, something like that total with everything. Right. And, you know, you can get to those spots where if you were ha- pumping in a, a, a climber, it's a lot more difficult. For sure. No, that's for sure. Uh, you guys are, are known for your SRT and DRT climbing. Like we said, you know, the arborist, obviously the professionals do it. Um, and what percentage of the time do you guys end up climbing with ropes? And then what percentage of the time do you climb with sticks or one sticking, et cetera? Um, I'm, I'm a rope guy. Uh, so for me, it's, it's, it's pretty much a hundred percent. Um, I do have sticks. Um, I have an upgraded, like, uh, I've got some Hawk heliums that, uh, I guess now are considered dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> with the way, uh, everybody's coming out with, especially, I mean, uh, Tether just sent us their one stick and that thing is just insane. It's I mean, very, very light. it's, it's, you look at it and you just, you're in disbelief how life, how light it is. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm a, I, not that I'm a, not a fan of, of a sticks. I mean, like I said, I think they're all tools and they all have their place, obviously, but uh, I'm a rope guy. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it's just because of my background, you know, so it's, you know, any time I go into a woods, I'm looking at it. Yeah, I can get in that tree. I can get in that tree. I can get in that tree. It's so for me, yeah, mostly rope. Yeah, Definitely. I would say me, um, I'm probably about 50 50 because I mean, l- listen, you know, we we like to promote the rope stuff because of what you can do with it. And it's kind of fun and everything. But I kind of look at it as every spot is a little bit different. And I, there's nothing better to me to have a spot where I could just put screw in steps, leave them there, sneak in, climb up my steps and tether in. But I can't do that on public land because you can't use screw in steps there. Yeah. Um, and I, I really never liked carrying four sticks. I used to do that too, but I kind of hated putting them in and then especially taking them back out and bringing them out. Um, so that situations like that, if I can set myself up, especially with a preset, Um, that's one of the things that a lot of guys don't really understand about our style. We primarily set up spots with a preset paracord loop. So we're not throwing a throw ball the same day. We do throw the throw ball the same day. Sometimes I'll especially do it when I bring this guy with me because he never misses the first try, but throwing a throw ball can be very frustrating and, uh, it takes a lot of practice, but you know, when you you bring an an arborist pro with you, it's, it, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like I said, you know, we always get that question. Well, you know, how, how do you throw that throw ball at 4 a.m.? You know, we don't. We don't. You know, we don't even try to, you know, and that's that's where all the, the presets come in. That's, you know, the postseason scouting, the preseason scouting, you know, we'll, you know, even if uh, if I do want to go in blind, um, I guess you or maybe you'd say semi blind. Um, I would go to a preset. And then if I felt like, you know, once sun came up and everything. And then if I said, okay, now, now I'll go make a move, you know, while it's still, it's early enough in the morning, I, I can make a move. Maybe, maybe I know where a known bedding area is, but uh, you know, my, my setup's a hundred yards away or 200 yards away. And then I'll, I'll make a move. So like a move on the fly. I mean, and that's the beauty of, of, of this method too, is that, you know, you're not, you're really not breaking anything down once you're in a tree. I mean, I've, I've, I can't, even, you know, count how many times I've sat in a stand and 
you know, and I've seen movement at whatever, 70, 80 yards away from me, hundred yards away from me, just for some reason, maybe it was a food source or whatever, but I was like, that's where I need to be. And okay. Now it's just, you know, grab that knot and then zip on down the tree, uh, pull my rope out, get to my next location, you know, and, and back up again, I go, you know, and then like Joe says, yeah, I make it look easy, I guess, because I can throw that throw ball pretty much and hit it in one shot. But, you know, and it's just one of the things that I preach a lot too, that if you really do like this method, you got to practice. That's, that's, that's probably the biggest obstacle in rope climbing. It's not so much the technique, but it's, it's hitting where you want to hit with that throw ball, being very proficient with that. You know? Yeah. We had a, we had a hunt we did last year um, we snuck up on a field and there was deer in the field and we were able to rope climb into the tree with a, with a couple of deer. They were literally no more than 40 yards away from us. Yeah. And we rope climbed into the tree while yeah. they were there. And yeah. yeah right. Yeah. yeah. So with a preset, that right. Is. With so a preset. Yes. That's with a preset. If we yeah. had to throw the throw ball, it might've yeah. been a little bit. Yeah. We might've gotten busted. That was pretty yeah. close. But. but with a preset, you can, you could sneak right up and, and get into the tree really easily. Um, one of the things I am working through, cause I've, I, I agree. I think the, the climbing methods, there's different tools for different situations. And I want to get, I've typically done more I think I had three sticks with the meters, but, um, what you said there, Joe, I think a lot of people look online and discuss in forums, the fastest way to get up, but so often it's the way down when it's dark, when, you know, that's right. you're making yeah. all the noise and you're fumbling with stuff and your fingers are cold. Um, Right. Yep. right. It takes so much longer and your wife is texting you, where are you? Um, and you hear yeah, uh-huh. um, yeah, right. And that's, that's when you rush and that's when an accident happens. It's too. actually scary sometimes when you're trying to get out and it's cold, like, you know, you're, you're a little bit stiff, you're cold, you're, especially if you're coming out of a tree stand. I always found climbing out of that, that first step out of the stand onto your steps. That's always a spot where I have the most anxiety until I start making my way down. But that's one of the beauties of using these utilize. And listen, you could use these rope climbing methods if you're in a tree standing. There's nothing to say. Right. You can yep. Repel out of the tree, even with that, you know. And uh, it just you zip right on down. It's nice and safe and quick. It's just not. I, I love that aspect of it. And I that's something I really like to emphasize because I, I just like you said, most people are thinking about how I can get up the tree as quick as possible. But you know, all right, think about a, a guy who's climbing with sticks and you come down. Now you got to take each stick down. If you're in a spot where you're trying to sneak out, you don't want to, maybe you have deer. How, how often does that happen where deer come in in the evening? You don't want to, um, you don't want to alert the deer to your location. You're trying to sneak out. It doesn't get any better than just repelling nice and slow down a rope and getting out of there. Right. When you got to pack up sticks, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, um, totally one, one of the, the biggest things that a lot of people overlook, but I think is actually one of the most valuable things about um, repelling and, and using rope techniques. Because I know it's happened to me numerous times where, yeah, it's just, they start coming out just at last light. And, you know, by the time they're being raid to be too dark, you never fails. Move down and you're trying to like, the sticks are going to bang together. It's pitch black. You don't want to turn on your headlamp because the deer yeah. are out there right in front of you. And uh, right there, right. Yeah. It, it, makes, yeah. it makes a big difference. Um, we've, we've been trapped in trees till nine o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're sick. And they're like, don't worry, honey. I'm, I'm okay. It just, there's deer in front of me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then it's usually that, you know, your, your phone, your phone dies by six, at, by 6 PM. And then you're still up there by eight and then everybody really gets worried, you know? Yep. Yeah. Then you get in trouble. <laughs> oh, for sure. Been there. Um, for me personally, one of the things I want to get better at this year is um, in a preset with the rope, pulling the rope um, over through the crotch quieter. Cause sometimes I find like I do I it too fast or it gets stuck and I'm like slapping it. Um, yep. <laughs> so what do you guys the, recommend? The big, the big thing with that is the way you tie it on. Yeah, it, the yeah, way- that, that and uh, the way you tie it on and also making sure that the, the crotch is not that tight, Yeah. you know, cause it, when it gets into the bottom of the crotch, if it's very narrow where, yeah, a, a paracord will go through easily, but then you try to pull, you know, 11 millimeter or 12, 13 millimeter rope through. And then, yeah, that's where you really, I mean, I've, listen, I've, 
it happens to me too. You know, I, I, I see a tree and I'm like, yeah, that's the tree. That's where I need to be. And I'll throw it through this crotch. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a little tight, but I, I think it'll work, you know? And then, yeah. Yeah. Four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> yep. yep. Exactly. Um, so how do you guys, every once in a while, there's some, every once in a while, there's some cursing in the woods. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, how do you guys recommend people tie on for those early morning times where I'm getting my preset, hooking my rope up and pulling it through? How can I do that more quietly and more efficiently? Um, I mean, it's especially if, like I said, having that, that perfect crotch really means a lot. Um, if it's a big wide open, like a, like, like a U-shaped style crotch, um, you should be able to very, very easily pull it through. Um, it should, shouldn't really make too much noise. It's all about limb selection. Yeah, like that. really. That's what it comes down to. Um, yeah. And sometimes, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on certain crotches too. Sometimes, uh, to tie it. I mean, first of all, don't, don't pull your carabiner end. Through. That's, that's probably definitely number one. No, no. Um, carabiner is going to make the most noise going through that crotch. I would always use the tail end of the rope. Um, pull from that end up, uh, you know, less chances definitely that it's going to get snagged. And also you're going to make some noise when that metal's hitting, coming through that crotch. Yeah. It's, it's a little easier to explain in, in video, but we basically like to keep it where the end of your rope, if it's, you know, you're pulling it up, your end of the end of your rope is just straight and your, your, uh, paracord, the way it's tied to it will keep it straight with no knots on it. Right. So there's, there's, it's not like I'm taking my rope and tying a big knot and, and pulling a clump up through the crotch. Right. It, should actually... be just, it should only be about as wide as the rope itself and tie, the way it's tied off, if it's tied properly, there should be very, very little there that can catch into the crotch. Right. The less you have there, the less resistance there is and the easier it'll go through. Yeah, you're actually like fo folding the rope, like a, you're making like a loop. Uh, make a double loop and then so you're more or less you're girth hitching your uh, paracord to your climbing line and usually i'll do i mean um I, I have a backup i would do one maybe five six inches down the rope and then that last one right at the tip so it's just a very smooth transition yeah. so it's like almost rope to rope transition and it just pulls it very smoothly over that crotch yeah. there's actually no knot there where it is so right and I, and I've had, I've heard, I've heard it in the past. I've had guys tell me like, even some in some of my videos, they're like, boy, that, but that makes an awful lot of noise going through. Sometimes you'll have these little sucker limbs and they may have some leaves on it. And they're like, boy, that makes an awful lot of noise going through. And I say, yeah, it does. But it's to me, I consider that to be more of a natural noise. I mean, no, no different than you know, squirrel when you hear squirrels racing around the tree, two or three of them going up and down the bark, you know, or, or even if you do hear, uh, you know, uh, leaves rattling, uh, almost like if, a, if a buck's on a sapling and he's, he's right, you know, so that noise, I, I, I don't really tend to, it's not an unnatural. Noise. It's, yeah, it's not an it's, unnatural. It's not like noise, metal right. or anything like that. Yeah, was, You might hear leaves rustling, that kind of thing, but it's right. not, it's not really an unnatural. I, I feel like we make more noise when we use our sticks and we first set them, there's more potential for noise when yeah, we first bite into the, Right. That, that right. is always to me the um, I find it a, a more of an alarming noise than any time. Yeah, because I'm it's a rope right. Rope. It's metal on bark. So and it does. It has a distinct noise. The, the key, too, is when you're pulling your ropes in, you know, like you were saying before, I think a lot of people are in a rush to get up the tree. Just if you slow everything down, you'll actually get up the tree faster. And if, if you go slow, it'll be quiet. Right. Um, just that that would be my biggest um, my my biggest uh, bit of advice is, you know, slow is smooth, you know, and if you're and smooth is fast, you'll 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 just get up the tree a lot quicker. Right. And if you're going slower, I, I find that like I'm always checking everything, making sure I'm safe you know, don't rush it because mm -hmm. that's, that's when you can make a mistake. Right. You, you know, and listening too. I mean, how many times have you climbed a tree in the morning going up sticks and then all of a sudden you start hearing that, yeah, it's not so you lovely. know, it's that deer's moving in right on you because he heard your approach. Right. He's just coming to check it out. Yeah. And I mean, even in my climbing tree stand, I've been up, you know, four or five, yeah. you know, rungs. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh man, now I'm, I'm eight feet off the ground, you know, and there's, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I do the kind of the same thing with the rope. I take my time going up. I'll pull up two, three, four times, and then I'll just stop, you know, kind of listen to my everything that's going on. If I hear any deer approaching, then I'll know not to, because I have, I've, I've gone up and then I've gone right straight to the top to where, you know, where my stand height is. And, and I've gotten busted, you know, definitely. I had a deer within 20 yards, probably said, all right, I had about enough of that. You know, he watched this clown go up the tree or, or heard him go up the tree and then just said, nah, not happening. <laughs> I've had deer sniffing my bow. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sitting there looking down at they got a doe down there sniffing around at my bow and my pack, and I'm, you know, they follow. It, it's funny. It, it's happened many times where, and especially in the dark, because I like to go in if I can help it without even using a light, and just try and sneak in, and they hear it. They're not sure what it is, and they just yeah, right. they'll come right in on you. I mean, you're upwind of them, so they, they're going to come check. You know, they're yeah. going to investigate. Yeah. No, that's good. Cool. I think that's. That's really good advice. Um, I know the first time I tried rope climbing, I did the opposite. I tied my rope to the front where the girth um, knot was, her knot was, and it uh, it got stuck right in the crotch, and I was flapping it. And I said, "That's that's the wrong side there, son. Yeah. That's <laughs> um, yeah, that's it." <laughs> I learned my yeah. lesson. Um, you guys, uh, what is yeah. when you head into the woods? What is the your typical gear um, for your regular day of hunting? What do you normally take in with you to climb? Um, I, I usually like in my pack, I'll have, you know, my ropes always there with me. Um, my, definitely my throw ball, even though I do go in with presets, I always like packing my, uh, my little throw ball pack in, in with me just because you never know, you know, it's just, you know, things change on a fly all the time. You know, you're going in, maybe, maybe you blew that setup up and then you got to move a hundred yards, you know, going in, you spooked everything out from under your tree or, you know, whatever. So I always, always do bring my, my, uh, my throw ball with me. Um, you know, other than that, just pretty much everything else is basic, uh, you know, knife lights, snacks, stuff like that. And, you know, but, um, yeah, I think we, we've, we've weighed our packs with everything. And I mean, it's probably under 10 pounds or right around 10 pounds. Yeah. And then, uh, and then my bow's in my hand. I always wear my saddle in. Everything's um, everything can fit in your pack. Yeah. So, you know, that's the beauty of it. And then even your, even your platform, like I'll that predator platform. I, I, I see a lot of now manufacturers are making some platforms a bit bigger um, some of the guys are, yeah. And I imagine maybe it's some of the newer guys that are used to a bigger, you know, you come from off of a tree stand to, to this and you're saying, Oh my God, you know, and then, and then I hear guys say, well, you know, I got size 13 boots. Well, yeah, I got size 13 boots too, but I, I, I like that small platform just for the fact that it fits inside my pack. Yeah. You know, I want to keep everything inside my pack. That's where it's the quietest. And then, uh, and then of course, if I have to pack clothes in, I, you know, that's on my, on the outside of my pack. So I never want to have to really fumble around switching out my, my platform for my clothes and then having to put my platform back on, you know, I try to go in and, you know, everything just in one shot right up the tree, you know, we'll leave, uh, the bottom of, uh, my pack at the bottom of the tree. Sometimes, sometimes I'll wear it going up. If I don't have to, you know, if it's not a real hard climb, I'll just come right up with it and then everything's right on my back. Um, but like I said, other times though, just the bottom of that, that rope, that there's your haul, that that's what hauls your pack up, you know, and then you can have a paracord separate for your bow. Yeah. I, I, I got a, um, but I, my typical thing is, and especially if, if I don't know, it, it depends on what's happening. If I'm going to a spot where I know it's a preset, I might not. I might not even bring in my throw ball or everything. Um, it's nice to have it in case you want to make a move. But what, what I found is that I've been filming and filming is a big pain in the neck because it's just more gear to bring with you. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and that's where for me, I, I start to notice every little ounce because um, it just, there's just more to do when I'm at the tree. Um, but for me, if I'm going to, if I'm planning on going to a spot where I've not been before, I would take my single stick. I'll take my SRT setup, and um, what what I'm able to do with my SRT setup, I, I find it's a little bit easier to get into a tree with SRT because I I, I don't have to be as picky with limb selection because I can just girth hitch the entire trunk of the tree. Um, 
but I bring my SRT setup and I also carry a split tail. So if I want to climb DRT, I can climb on my SRT rope with a split tail. I can SRT climb or I can one stick climb and I carry my throw ball and all that stuff. It really doesn't, it's not a lot of weight. So I, ha- I just have options. So if I'm going in on a run and gun setup, there's almost nothing I can, I can't get into. So, and the only reason I, on a run and gun setup that I take the single stick is if I have a tree that doesn't have a limb that I can throw into. Um, that for me, that's why I started single stick climbing right. just for, that's my plan B. I, if I have a, a spot that I'm going into, especially with a preset, I, I would never single stick climb when I can DRT or SRT climb. I just find it much easier to get up and down the tree just on the rope. But um, if I don't have a, a limb that I can hit or maybe I'm too close to bedding, I, I'm not comfortable throwing a throw ball and maybe making more noise then I'll go to my single stick and it's a little bit, a little bit more work getting up the tree, but it's still doable. Right. So. Right on. And what, do and you then, recommend- you know, just all the other gear that, that everybody carries in. Uh, what do you recommend for, um, for, for SRT? What, um, you know, like there's hand ascenders. What have you found that works the best for you? Definitely. Um, for, for me, it's basically like a, what they call a rad system, rapid ascent. And it's um, the CT quick roll uh, climbing technology, CT quick roll and the sender uh, that works great because it has a, uh, it's, it's got a built in mo- micro pulley to it. And there's the nice thing about the micro pulley on that is it's fixed. So there's no noise. It can't rattle or anything. Um, and then you'll incorporate a foot loop on the bottom of that. And then I use, um, I use a, a Grigri plus uh, uh, belay device. A lot of guys are using the Mad Rock, but I'm, I, I kind of favor the Gree Gree myself, and um, I'm using that. And once you practice with that, it, it's, it's very, very easy to climb like that. And you can just climb nice and slow, nice and quietly, um, very, very safe, and uh, it's not a lot of gear. It's very, very light setup. Right. So it's, it's – and I, the thing that I like about SRT – um, one of the nice aspects of it is like I was saying before with SRT, if you're using a throw ball, you don't have to get too fussy with what limb you want to be on. You, you, you could just get over a sucker as, and just girth hitch the main trunk of the tree and you can climb it. Right. Whereas with DRT, you kind of have to be a little bit more fussy, have the, a good limb. So you don't have too much friction. There's no friction in an SRT setup. So it's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Um, what do you think is the most important piece of safety advice that you can give to saddle hunters? You guys are known for safety. And that's one of the things I appreciate most about you guys and your channel is that you pay attention to safety. What do you think is one of the most important pieces of advice that you can give to, to saddle hunters, especially those just starting out? Go slow. <laughs> um, yeah, I even did a video on this too. Guys were like, really, they were almost like in competition. Who can get up the tree the fastest? And then you started hearing guys actually, you know, making mistakes and getting hurt. Yeah, just just really go slow. I mean, if you're a beginner, um, get a foot off the ground, really. Um, you you know, you can have your preset or, or throw the throw ball with your rope through the crotch and everything. Um, just set your place foot off the ground and just get comfortable trusting that saddle and and you know and you know you go over all your knots of course making sure all your knots are tied right um you know your safety knots in at the tail end of your rope and uh and just go slow um once you learn the technique and you can just every day you can kind of advance a little bit higher a little bit higher you, the the main thing is just feeling comfortable up there um i've seen a lot of guys where uh, you know, you, as you go up a tree and of course, gravity is always going to take effect, you know, so uh, it's going to swing you left, swing you right or whatever. Um, uh, I've, I've seen guys, you know, constantly reaching out to grab the tree to, to slow their, to slow that descent left or right, or, uh, you know, that sway. So, you know, at that point, you're really not comfortable yet, you know? So, um, like I said, if you practice a foot off the ground, swinging around from side to side, um, off, off the side of your, your, your predator platform and, you know, have your bow if you practice, mm-hmm. practice spinning around. That's the thing with saddle hunting. I mean, you know, we're not standing up on a tree stand or, or a seated shot 
you know, you're, you're using muscles that you never used before. You know, don't just, just if you're climbing ropes, it's all about balance. So there's a lot of muscles that are going on, a lot of muscles that are triggering and firing to keep you stable in that tree. So, you know, you have to really, you know, it's, it's good to, you know, it, it does, it's, it's like an exercise. So it does kind of build your core, the more you do it and, it, and it's helping you for that, for that hunt that comes in the future. But yeah, somebody, um, if you're just getting into it, um, the further away from the hunting season, definitely the better. I mean, I've heard some guys, you know, oh, I got my saddle. It's October 15th. I'm going out tomorrow morning. Yeah. No, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't, you know, just, you know, put your time in and practice, I, you know, because it's, listen, uh, you know, getting hurt is, I mean, that's, listen, we're all out there to enjoy ourselves. And it, and if you have such a passion like we do to hunt, I mean, who wants to be hurt, you know, or worse, dead, <laughs> you know, it's, it, you know, that's no fun. It's no fun sitting on the sidelines, sitting in a hospital bed, all banged up and, you know, while your buddies are out there killing bucks and having a good time, you know, but yeah, no, go slow. That's my number one thing is tell everybody, just slow it down make sure everything's done right, check it, recheck it, and then just, you know, have fun with it and take your time. Just Yeah, I think a lot of guys, they're, they come from a tree stand background and just getting into a saddle, no matter how you climb, it's a little, you know, now you're, you're sitting there hanging off of a rope. And in the past, if you were hanging off of a rope, that was your, that was your safety harness, right? Just to catch you if something went wrong. Um, so I think a lot of people have to they, they're looking at their system. And if you think about it with a saddle, you don't really have a safety harness. You're sitting into a fall restraint system and that's it. You know, some people talk, I see that question a lot, actually, where some guys say, you know, how many guys are actually using a safety harness with their saddle? And I guess if that's what it takes to make you comfortable, you can do that. Right. But um, yeah, exactly. I, I think, you know, what Scott was saying is, you really, when you do this, the more you do it down low and you get comfortable and you build confidence in your system. And if you understand that the gear, and, and this is for gear that you buy, that you know that it's all rated. Right. I think one of the biggest dangers is there's a lot of guys trying to save money and do a lot of uh, do it yourself stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't want to be climbing on stuff that you just bought at Home Depot. You want to buy stuff that's climb rated and you know is designed for the task that you're doing. So you're safe. Right. And if you, if you take your time and you build your system, right. And you take the time to learn it properly, practice low. And if you get real comfortable low, then you could just go high and then you can have fun. And I, I know what it feels like. Cause you know, he's, he's the arborist climber all this time. When I first started doing it, I was kind of like a cat in the tree at first, but then just the more I did it, the more comfortable I got. And now I feel very comfortable doing it. And it felt so much safer. Right. You know? No, that's great. Um, I think that, that's excellent advice. One of the things you touched on there is knots. What knots should every saddle hunter know how to tie properly and safely? Uh, number one, uh, Blake's hitch, without a doubt. I mean, if you're going to DRT climb, um, it's all about the knots. It's all about your friction hitches. You should know, you know, a Blake's hitch uh, is definitely your... Uh, probably your number one as far as advancing and, and, you know, up and going up the tree and coming back down. Um, you should know how to tie a swabish knot. Um, it's, that's an excellent knot in place of a Prusik. A Prusik you should know as well too. That works very well, but a lot of guys have a problem with a Prusik where it, once your weight's applied to it, it really, it, it locks up pretty tight and it's a lot harder. That's why you hear a lot of guys say, oh, you know, I, I went to a rope man just because the Prusik was, was, it would bind, it would make it so much harder for me. Swabish is super, super friendly. Um, it, it, it slides, you know, either direction. It breaks a lot. It easier. breaks easier, but it also, it, it'll move. It'll slide after it breaks, after you apply the pressure to it. Um, but yeah, so definitely Blake's hitch, Swabish, Prusik. Um, they're, they're like pretty much your, your, your go-to, um, you can, and also just a, any, any, there's a couple of them out there for your carabiners to tie your carabiners on. Um, I don't, what do you use? What's your main, um, what do you like on it? On on, well, when I, on my carabiner, if I'm DRT climbing, I like to tie a clove hitch yep. to tie in my, I just find it easy. 
Um, so I'll use that to time my, if I'm, when I'm DRT climbing the carabiner and then, you know, from there I'll have the bridge and tie the Blake's hitch. But, um, I'll be honest with you. Um, I generally try to tell people whenever you can eliminate a knot with a sewn, with something that's sewn, do that. So, yes. so a lot of guys will buy like accessory cord and maybe tie up their own Prusix and tie like a double fisherman's knot very common. And if you know how to do it properly, it's not a problem, but, um, I just, I feel a little bit more comfortable yeah, fact, with a, a factory, factory sewn. sewn eye that's been tested. Yeah. I feel more, I feel like more confidence in that than I do in even my own knot tying ability. All right. So, yeah. And it may be, you know, it may be a few more bucks, but like I said, you know, it's your life you're talking about. So, you know, there really is, you know, there's no price limit on your, on your life, on your safety. Yeah. And, you know, if you learn how to tie it right, but even if, when you know how to tie it right, check it, double check it, always put in. Uh, the other thing uh, Scott has always really emphasized when you tie a knot, always uh, tie in a safety yeah, knot, like with your Blake's hitch, put a, an extra backup so that if it does start to slip, you'll have, you know, a, a backup safety knot so it can't pull out. So all that stuff, you should take your time and, and learn it and uh, – the, the key is, it, I always say with this stuff, it's no different than gun safety. Um, you know, guns are safe if you if you know how to use them properly. So you have to, the, the key is learning to do it properly. If you learn how to do it properly, it's going to make you safer. You know, there's, it, it'll make you safer than any other form of climbing. Um, but if you if you cut corners with with gear and you you know you don't do it right, <clears throat> you know. There's nothing, there's nothing more dangerous than a knot that's tied incorrectly. Right. You know, so, cause then you can't have any confidence in it. We, we had uh, somebody that we saw one time that tried to tie their own Prusik and it pulled out when he was 20 feet up. And then he asked, he said, well, how do you tie a Prusik? And, and I was like, you know, why would you ask after <laughs> you really should have found that out before you, should, you know, you shouldn't be you know, putting your life on something that you right. really weren't sure how to tie. So. It would have, would have worked out much better for you to <laughs> yeah. know it. First. Fortunately, he didn't get hurt, but right. uh, it was, you know, yep. that was something that we tried. And every time we see something where we can learn because um, people are going to make mistakes and um, you know, there's going to be a lot of lessons learned. Right. So we, that's one of the things on our channel that we like to do is, when we see something, we like to emphasize and talk about it and see what we could all learn from it. And hopefully everybody benefits from right. it. Right. Yeah. And just like uh, to reiterate, just that's why I always like to emphasize on on the newbies or, you know, anybody just starting this out. That's why I say start low, start a foot off the ground, because if you're going to make a mistake, that's where you want to make the mistake. <laughs> Not at 10, 12, 20 feet, you know, a foot off the ground. Then you can, you know, you'll live to tell about that one. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it comes quick. You know, yeah, it, it, it really does come quick. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's one of the things you guys said at the beginning, how this adds a layer of, of, of enjoyment and fun to your hunting. I think learning some of these things, if you come at it with the approach of this is fun, I'm going to learn how to do this well and properly so I'm safe and so I can climb easier and quieter and, and get into those spots that I haven't been able to get to before. It can be, it can add to the experience. If we try to cut corners and all right, what's the fastest way to, to you know, if you, YouTube, Google, you know, the fastest way to tie a, a Prusik and you click on that one and just get it done and climb a tree. Yeah. You're asking for trouble. Yeah. Have, yeah. Have fun. Yeah. With the yeah process, you are. Have fun learning. Absolutely. Know, tying the knots and tying yep. them out and seeing that. Yeah. You're right. That Prusik, it's really binding, but the Swabish, it works, slides better and a tender. Have fun with the, the learning process and enjoy the journey because it's, it's part of it, right? Just enjoying the learning is, is such a great experience itself. Absolutely. Yeah. It, pay, it pays dividends down the road. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, one, one of the things too, is we found uh, our, our good friend, Joe, uh, he's got young kids and he started teaching them how to climb. He got them some, some uh, child size saddles and teaching them how to climb. And they, you know, now they, they can't wait to go hunting with them. And it, it's one of these things where if you think about hunting and fishing, if you take a kid hunting and fishing, you take a kid fishing, if they don't catch fish, they're not going to have fun, right? If you take a kid hunting, they don't see any deer and they don't have any action, they might not have fun and they might lose interest. But if you take a kid hunting and he's saddle hunting and he gets to climb a rope up and down, he's going to have fun whether they, he sees a deer and has any action or not. Right. He's going to have fun climbing. We're just big kids. We That's like, it. we you know, climbing's fun. So, yeah. you know, we just want to make climbing fun again. 
Yeah. I know, Turns you into an adventure hunter. <laughs> for sure. My son last year, um, we were up in a tree and he says it was by accident. I had him um, hooked up with on rappel. Mm -hmm. And he said it was by accident. He dropped, I think it was the range finder. I let him hold the range finder. He's like, oh, I dropped it. I guess I'll have to rappel down and get it now. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. That's no, no. it. Drop the gloves. They work a lot. Like, don't drop the range finder anymore. That's that's not a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, nope. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does. It adds to the experience. It adds to the enjoyment um, of, of being part of the woods and, and, and having that, that, that adventure. Um, in Absolutely. Closing, yeah, in closing, um, what would you say each of you would be some of the best either hunting or climbing advice that each of you have received? What's like a nugget? If someone's going to listen to this and come to the end and take away one thing from today's chat, what do you want them to, to remember? <laughs> one nugget of information that's like the, the most important thing? That's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of things. There's, I, a, I don't lot know of, the There's a lot of ones, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, listen, our, our our whole channel is based on every day coming up with a different idea of like, oh, this is a little nugget of information. Let's make a video on it. Right. So it's it's really hard to quantify one one particular thing. Um, but I I I would say, you know, for I would say the biggest emphasis for us has always been just the safety safety aspect of it. So um probably the most important thing is, is just guys really take the time to learn how to do it properly. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, you know, I, I get some questions asked. Some guys are like, what's more important, you know, safety or comfort. And well, if you're not safe, comfort's not going to matter. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I guess that would be it. <laughs> yeah. I think, it's excellent advice and to um like I said to take the time to do things properly and safely it's enjoy the process enjoy the learning and when you have that confidence and you're able to be relaxed in it um enjoy the experience it's typically shortcuts one, th one thing i've learned that i'm as i'm not 17 anymore um is that shortcuts yeah. rarely work out you know what i mean it's typically That's doing cool. things the right way leads to the right result that we're tied to, you know, yeah. to cut corners and take shortcuts don't usually end up going too well. No, no, no. Well, that's that. And that's exactly kind of the point I was trying to make before when I said, if you actually slow down, you'll actually get up the tree quicker. Right. You know, it's, if you just take your time, everything just flows nice and smooth. I don't know about you, but when, when I'm hunting, it's like Murphy's law, whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. Absolutely. You know, getting hung up on things I've had trying to pull my pack up and it gets hung up on a branch that you don't see just the, the craziest things happen when you're hunting. So if you go slow, you tend to avoid some of those problems. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, if people, I'm going to put the links in the description, but if people are looking to get more information um, from you guys and from your videos, where should they go? on YouTube, New York Saddle Hunter. And uh, we also have a, a Facebook group, uh, New York Saddle Hunters Forum on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit easier for us to communicate with guys on that. Um, this way, if they have questions, we've had a lot of people that, you know, they might have a little bit of trouble setting a Blake's hitch or something. So, um, you know, we've taken phone calls, we've gone back and forth, FaceTimed with people. Yeah. And we've had them actually take videos of their process and send it to us, send it to you us. know, and then we can kind of pick it apart and go, okay, there, this is where the problem is, you know, do, do this differently. And then bang, done problem yeah. solved. And we just, we love this stuff. We yeah, just, we really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. We, we love when, whenever we go to one of these saddle hunter events and we could just kind of teach people. And yeah. it, the cool thing is when guys do it, and you see the light bulb go off and they start to realize, oh, my God, there's a lot of there's a lot of possibilities with this stuff. This is going to really right. This is really going to help out my hunting game. Yeah. So it, it's a really good tool, yeah. really good tool to have. So I, I, I you know, it, we propose it because there's you know some people it, maybe it's not for everybody, but, um, you know, guys like us, look, we're in our 50s. We're older guys. And we're, we're not looking to make it harder. We're looking to do stuff to make Absolutely. it easier. Yep. And, 
you know, the, the one thing I would say is if you're kind of on the fence, give it a try, see if it works out for you. Uh, and you, you'd yeah. be surprised. It, it's, it's a lot of fun and, and it really helps we've, really help your game. We've got some guys in the, they, they um, reach out to us, message us and they're, they're in their seventies. One guy was in his eighties yeah. and I'm like, man, yeah. I hope that's me one day. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I can only hope. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been a blast. It really has, you know, for something on uh, just kind of a whim. And we were like, yeah, let's throw this out there and see, see what happens. And it's, yeah, it's, it's been a it's lot been of fun. A, we're, we're really enjoying it. We just, we just like, we like meeting guys like you meeting yeah. everybody. You know, every, we're all cut from the same cloth. Absolutely. We're all hunters. We're all kind of gearheads. We're all just, you know, enjoying the passion. So um, to us, we, we, we just love this stuff. So we enjoy helping guys out with it. That's great. That's great. And those events, you said, um, you mentioned them, you had one in March and you have another one upcoming. Well, we're right now we're trying to set one up. Um, we don't have it. Uh, we don't have it etched in stone. I'm trying to set one up in June. Um, if anybody wants to, you know, follow our New York saddle hunter forum and our YouTube channel, we'll, uh, we'll post it there when we have it etched in stone, but we've been, it, the problem with us has been, between COVID and everything and trying to find a venue where we can do it. Yep. So um, we, we, we're pretty sure we should be able to nail one down in June though. Right. That's what we're shooting for. That's great. Well, that's excellent. Scott, Joe, thank you very much for joining us here today on the Canadian Saddle Hunter. We appreciate your advice, your, your input, and thank you for all that you do for the saddle hunting community. Thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. We appreciate Thanks for, it. Thanks for having us, man. Hope we see near distant future on the trail. Yeah. Climb safe. Definitely. Sure.